Uh, one of the things that we've learned over time is that we think the risk of uh, occupational exposure uh, is quite low. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Parkalo. I am the uh, medical director of the COVID testing centers, Mayo Clinic, uh, Florida. And this is a overview of the upcoming article, Risk of SARS-CoV Transmission Among Coworkers in a Surgical Environment, which will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. This was a observational study that we did early in the pandemic, discussing how coworkers and their risk of infection in a surgical environment. The study basically uh, resulted from three, uh, excuse me, two individuals who uh, were COVID positive, uh, SARS-CoV-2 PCR positive that were in the surgical environment. This triggered a extensive evaluation of 394 other coworkers to evaluate them for positivity as well. During the first round of testing, uh, which was shortly after uh, the initial positives, 394 were tested. Only one had returned a positive PCR as well. That one person on further evaluation was determined probably to have, to have non-occupational exposure and most likely uh, was infected previously outside of the institution. These three workers, the two initial workers, as well as the third positive, uh, were in the surgical environment for several days around the time of their initial infection. However, on the repeat testing, uh, we did not find any further positive uh, healthcare workers in that environment. So again, we tested 394 initially, we tested 387 the second time, a week later. So those were two PCR tests separated by a week. So given the results of that, we felt that the risk of the transmission for these particular uh, co-workers was very low. Um, the emphasis here uh, was this is one of the first studies that really looked at co-workers alone. So this was not transmission from patients. We had a very low level of uh, patient infectivity at that time. And these workers were mostly not uh, dealing with the COVID positive patients. These were workers in a surgical environment. So we think that the transmission rate between coworkers in this environment was quite low. The other thing to emphasize was that this was before we had uh, universal masking and universal use of N95s and other uh, PPE. So even in that environment, uh, we, the risk was quite low for transmission. Since that time, we have moved to universal masking for both patients and employees. So uh, the bottom line on this particular study is that for patients, as well as clinicians, is that uh, the risk of contracting COVID in a surgical environment is quite low. Uh, we also uh, think that this is a, a point of emphasis that we need to maintain the environment that we're currently in. Uh, it's important to realize that the surgical environment had uh, significant masking, uh, hand washing, uh, and a well-ventilated area, even though it's a contained area with a large number of people, those factors in that environment, we believe significantly reduces the risk of transmission. Some of the future directions that we're going to look for in the study, we're doing some more serologic testing of this particular group. Uh, and then we've also done some studies uh, with this group uh, about uh, risk for other types of viral infections. So those will be coming out in the future. But I think the bottom line in terms of this study is we think the risk of transmission between coworkers in the surgical environment is low. Uh, and this should give some reassurance to these practices to both patients and to providers in these areas that by maintaining uh, this particular environment with masking, hand washing uh, and well and good ventilation uh, should continue to make this risk quite low. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org.
There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.